I'm just getting ready to go into the gym. I got a phone call. It's from Tim Christie, our, print room, our press room manager. Ryan, the building's on fire. I don't, I don't know what to do, uh, but I gotta go. The building's on fire. I said, we gotta get down there. Yeah. So next phone call, I call Ruth and I go, we need to get a wheels up plant. Yeah. We need to get down there ASAP. And within three hours, we were down in the plant and you and I and Brian are sitting in an ambulance with the chief of the fire department with the rest of our team out sitting, yeah. never forget with the doors open, yeah. and they're all looking at, well, he's describing what's going on in the yeah. building. No one's been in the building, we don't know the damage, and it was me, you, and um, I don't a know, the, people, a people, couple John people, Sheridan. and we had the, the, the flashlights on, yeah. and we start walking in, and there's water all over the floor, and um, and we got lucky. They didn't have to destroy the, the ceiling. I, I, they didn't I think have the to. next day we were running again. Yeah. The so place. so we got calls and um, the whole team galvanized and yep. we literally, yep. except for that machine, were up and running. The Every single plant. person in that plant was on something, cleaning something, wiping up some water up. And I got to tell you, within within a day we were running again um, in certain areas, maybe two well, or three damage days. Control with all yeah. of our customers yeah. who saw it on the news and everything yeah. else. Yeah. 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 And again, they were the safety, shop, so. All the safety protocols you guys put in place worked. The mm -hmm. doors yeah. came down, right? It, yes. it kept the fire The building contained. is set up to section off with the firewall. The word that I'm most proud of, which is trust. We trust one another. You yeah. always said, you know, we got to get get the right people on the bus. We're all going in the same direction, yeah. but we need the right people on the bus, you know, and I think... It's a good term. Over the years, yeah, we've certainly got the right people. It's everybody getting along, rowing the boat in the same direction. And there are mistakes that have been made along the way. Sure. We truly learn from those mistakes. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. You know? We c we cover each other. We yep. If I see something wrong, I'm going to tell somebody. If they see something wrong, I expect them to tell me. That's how it works. Going through a very difficult time in the business, uh, we were basically on the precipice of orderly liquidation. Not even Chapter 11, but Chapter 7. Oh. And the worst part is up until our fiscal year end of March 31st, two months prior to that, our CFO said, oh yeah, we're going to make about $700,000. What year was that roughly? This was 2004. Yeah. And we were just about to finish out the year. And he says, oh no, we're actually going to lose $2 million. Who is this? Marty 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 Hooks. Hooks. I said, he given up? Which was, you know, pretty ballsy at the time for me, but I was miserable. It's the only time I ever looked for another job was in 2004 because I just couldn't handle it anymore, the pressure of not being on time and having quality issues and not even having any answers before you guys took back over yeah. in manufacturing. And uh, They still needed us. Yeah, and I just said, just tell me you're not giving up because, uh, you know, I'll follow your lead. I didn't want to... Uh, keep fighting on the front lines right. if my captain wasn't there, you know, so he said, said no, I'm not giving up I just you know, but this is important families are just as important too and and um, And then we came back and it turned out to be the best time ever since then So I call Walt and I say would, would you meet me at a diner? <laughs> uh oh <laughs> Speaking of Soprano is this a hit? I'm getting whacked <laughs> <laughs> And I said, you know, um are you on the team? And you know, is Brian on the team? Because this is what we got to do. Right. And uh, he said, he's like, he's like, I got your back. What do we got to do? I said, well, we're gonna have to shut down this 40-year-old legacy called Hop Hog. We can't keep it. I know it says RK Drive, and we're gonna have to let 60 probably people have to are gonna have that to go. That was a good call. And um, he's like, whatever we got to do. And the bank to this day said it was the fastest turnaround. That they ever saw. The biggest thing, the biggest comeback we had though was incredible in 2005, 2006. Yeah. 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 I remember flying down to um, Roanoke and I let Harry Todd go. Yeah. You and I talked about it, I flew down there, I, I got rid of Harry Todd and then I started to look at what was going on down there and mm -hmm. the things that I saw I couldn't believe. So I immediately got Brian involved and the rest of the old team back together again and you know I went to the warehouse and what I found in that warehouse I could not believe. They must have run every job that they did over and over and over again. And every time they made a mistake, they would just put it in the warehouse and not report it. Yeah. The news started coming in about what was going on in Wuhan and um, really scared the hell out of me because, you know, these are some of the smartest people around. They're saying, you know, what, what's coming uh, is gonna be quite a challenge. So first calls I made were to you. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, you know, one of the things we need to do is, and you, Brian, were the next call, is we have to stop letting people in the building right now. And we've got to figure out a way to not have anybody come in and, and really kind of limit the exposure that we have to what it was. And then my next call was worried about cash, because having gone through all the things we've been through, what's going to happen if there's a, a depressionary pandemic is we're going to run out of money. So I went right to our banks and I said, you know, we've got a, a nice line of credit. We want to draw down quite a bit of be piece of business, uh, money and go from that. But the reality is that we started working with our, our you know, our team about, you know, what our IT looked like, who's going to be working from home, how are we going to communicate, mm -hmm. how order is going to be done. Mm -hmm. And it was really just, I was so impressed with everybody's focus. And oh. think about it, the amount of sales that you've done from basically your apartment and you from your home over the last years has been unbelievable. Yeah. The other thing that we fought for because we had to be a, um, an essential business supplier and we fought for P&G to get us that letter. So that yes. was a huge victory because without to that, open. to stay open. Yes. So we basically didn't miss a day. We anticipated the reopening before the others. Yeah. And we went ahead and made a huge investment in all of our raw materials yeah. Yeah. where the others did not. And now they're all struggling to get their materials yeah. where we have the materials yeah. now and they're all coming to us. In, yeah. in terms of never giving up, yeah. and I think that's the issue. Grandpa Max went through the depression. I mean, you know, in the stories that he had, you know, tell the story of, you know, what he was most proud of when he, when he would come home at the oh. end of the week. Well, that's a, that's a story of when I was, I was uh, 10 years old. And my father would come home on a Friday night, and uh, we'd sit around the table to have dinner. And he says to us, you know, I just made uh, uh, wages for my boys. My boys. Hmm. He considered everybody his boys. Mm. And um, I never forgot that at the age of 10, you know, eight, eight or 10 at the time. Looked at him but as family. Mm -hmm. It was family, yeah. that's yeah. right. It's still family. <laughs> so that's where we are at this moment, a yeah. hundred years in, mm -hmm. you know, going through. And I think the key is just never giving up, persevering, staying positive, optimistic. I think that's the biggest thing you've given me is always stay optimistic. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got a great company and great people and a great team. A toast to Grandpa Max. Here, here, Max. Cheers. Okay. Got you guys. Delight.